Hey guys, so in this video we are looking at functions and interval notation. If you're in 098, uh, you've already met interval notation, but um, if you're in 95, this is the first time through, so I'm going to kind of treat it as a first time through. So interval notation is always written from small to large or from left to right on the number line. Um, for endpoints that are not included, which are the open dots and things that come from less thans and greater thans, but no equals to, we're going to use parentheses. So parentheses are going to go with open dots and no equals. And we'll use brackets for closed dots and things with equals. And then infinity is kind of what the, the number line goes to. And that's kind of this little sideways eight symbol that don't draw that good. Um, out here there was negative infinity. This one's positive infinity. Um, and those cannot be included because we can always go one more step beyond infinity. As that's kind of the definition. So this first example, um, we have you know the number line, and it's the arrows going both ways all the way. So that that's all real numbers. And to write that in interval notation, we would just say from negative infinity to positive infinity. So again, parentheses because it can't be included, and then we're just using the endpoints separated by a comma. Um, these can look a little like an ordered pair, and the only way that you know the difference is basically by context. Um, so this next one, we're going from negative infinity is our farthest point to the left, and that's going up to this 8, and we're including the 8, so we will use a bracket there. This one, we have this little gap, so we're going to get a new symbol. It's going to be called union, and um, actually, I think we saw that back in 094 for the 95s. Um, so this is going to go from negative infinity up to 4, and bracket on the 4 because it's a solid dot, and then union from 6, that will be a parenthesis because the open dot, and then out to infinity. So again, always left to right. Uh, this example, so we're starting at 2 is our farthest left with a parenthesis, up to 5, and then bracket on that. Union, I forgot to pause there and talk about it a little bit, but remember union is our, our symbol for or, so it's a way of pasting two distinct sets together. So union um, 8 to infinity. So this next example would be the matched one I'd have you guys try in class. So for this one, we're starting at 5, and we're going to positive infinity. For this one, we go out to negative infinity, so we're going to go negative infinity up to and including that 2, so bracket, union to jump over the gap, 4, and then up to 7. Uh, here we got negative infinity to the 3, and then union over the gap, and then from 7 up through infinity. And this last one's got three little intervals, so we got negative infinity up to 3, union that with 4 to 6, again bracket for closed, uh, parenthesis for open, union that with 8 to infinity. Okay, so then these next few examples involve functions and, and what functions are. And then we'll see at the end we're going to pick up um, functions and domain and range, and then domain and range we're going to state in terms of interval notation. So that's why we're seeing that in this section. Um, so what's a function? Well, for every x there's only one y. That's kind of the basic definition of a function. So for every input there can only be one output. Um, an example I use in class sometimes is if you think of test scores. If I say, um, you know, some student x, what was their test score? For exam one, there's only one answer to that question, right? If I have some student and they took a test, they only get one score. But if I say, it, you know, who in the room got a 87 on the test, then there may be more than one answer to that because the 87 isn't exclusive to one person or another. So that would not be a function. So anything where when we ask, you know, what did the student get the score? There's only one answer. That's a function. If we go like with the 87, you know, and we get an A7, two people got an A7, that's not a function. So it can't have more than one answer for the given input. Um, so looking at these tables, the the easy way to spot this, and, and don't just like stop at the easy way, but when you see duplicate X's, that's telling you there's gonna be a problem. Um, this one, when X is zero, it's two, when X is one, it's three, when X is two, it's three again. That's not actually a problem though, because when X is one, 
the y is only 3. That's it. When x is 2, the y is only 3. So that's still a function because it's there's only one output for a given input. Um, it, you can have the same output over and over, but the inputs have to be different. And then for 3, uh, it's going to be 5. So we would say, yes, that's a function. This one I was saying where we see these duplicates, that's a problem because when x is 1, it could be 2 or 3. That's like when the test score is 87, it could be, you know, the student or that student. And so that makes this not a function. And you can kind of spot those pretty easy by when you see those duplicate in the x column. So this is a no. And then here, when x is 3, y is 2, but then I was trying to be sneaky down here, when x is 3, y is 5. So when x is 3, there's it could be 2 or 5, so that's nope, not a function. Um, this next one, I have the directions correct in the notes, but it should just say indicate if it's a function. So kind of ignore that if you would. Um, so this one is unemployment rate and then the month. So this is the unemployed, un bleh, <laughs> sorry, unemployment rate in Washington State and then some months in 2015 that I looked up. So if I look at the rates, um, if you look in June and July, it was 5.3%. So if I say when was the unemployment rate 5.3%, you'd have to say June or July. So that makes this one not a function. Uh, for this one, if I look at the the actual m month in question, there was only one rate for each month, right? So because you're not going to have two different rates in the same month. So this would say, yes, that is a function. Okay, for number five, this is where we actually pick up domain and range and indicate if it's a function. So domain and range, domain is just all your x values and range is your y values. And so with this one, these are sets of ordered pair. And so our domain and range are just going to be lists. Um, our domain would be these x's here. So 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'll just abbreviate it to D. Um, I believe on the computer you don't have to type that symbol, but that's the symbol when you're going to do a list. Um, I think the way it looks on there is there's a box, and then you just type in the box. But the, the little, they're called braces. I don't draw them very good, but that's the appropriate uh, parenthesis type thing for a list. So this would just be 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then the range on that is the y value, so it looks like 3, 4, 5. Um, I'll just do it this way, 3, 4, 5. And we don't have to list the 5 twice that it's indicated means it's in the range. And there's no duplicates and x's, so that means for every x there's only one y. And so we would say yes, that is a function. For this one, our domain would be uh, 2, 2, see right there, not going to be a function, 4, 5. So we can just say 2, 4, and 5. Our range is going to be 3, negative 2, negative 1, 3. So we probably want to do those small to large. So I'll go negative 2, negative 1, and 3. And then when x is 2, it could be 3 or negative 2, so that makes that uh, not a function. Uh, third one, A, B, C, up, oh, A, B, B, C, so it's not going to be a function because we have some duplicates in our, in our x's. And then our range, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then it looks like when the input is B, the output could be negative 2 or negative 1, so that would not be a function. Okay, this next one's the vertical line test to determine if a graph represents a function. And this is super easy. Um, if any vertical line drawn would intersect the curve more than once, then the graph does not represent a function. Um, so basically, it's just if I draw a vertical line through here, and I hit the graph in more than one place, it's not a function. And the reason for that is for this x, you know, for in this case, x is 2, when that's the case, it looks like the output could be about 2.2 for the y or about negative 2.2 for the y. So for a given x, I'm getting out two different y values. So that's why the vertical line test works. So if you can hit it more than once, you say, nope, not a function. Over here, no matter where I draw a vertical line, I'm only intersecting the graph at one place. And so that indicates that, yes, it would be a function. 
Okay, these are the good ones. So find the domain and range for each graph, write the solution set in interval notation. Um, so this is this is a little bit hard for people, um, kind of getting their brain around what's happening with the graph. Um, so the domain is again going to be our x values, the range is going to be our y values, and then our goal is to write that in interval notation. So our domain, if we look, I'll do domain in black, that is the farthest my graph is going to go um, to the right or to the left. There's an, a solid endpoint here, so I'm going to say negative 4, um, and then to the right. And here's kind of what happens is this graph is going down, so people want to write negative infinity here because they're like, see, it's going down, but it's going down and to the right. So the y values are going to negative infinity, but the x values, those are getting bigger. It's just the y's are getting smaller as x gets bigger. So the x values are going to positive infinity. Um, for the range, if we look at this, the highest point on the graph is going to be this 3. The lowest point is given by this arrow right here, right? Because this is heading forever to negative infinity. So this is going to go from negative infinity, and this one came out to infinity. And then it's going to go up to right here at this 3, because that's the tallest the graph ever is. So it's this region right here. That's going to be my range. So that's going to go from negative infinity, can't include it because it's infinity, up to 3. Um, it doesn't have to be a point. The line counts as a, a bunch of little points on there, so the 3 would be inclusive. For this next one, um, so our domain, we're going to start here. And then this one doesn't have arrows. Um, by the way, on the homework, they did a lousy job of drawing these. The ones with the arrows, they just draw as like a straight line going off the graph. And there's a note down here that says, um, hey, if it does this, it goes on forever. But let me just say it here too to hopefully help people catch that. So you won't see the arrow, you'll just see it drawn all the way to the edge. Um, this one stops, so we stop at negative 6 on this side. And we're stopping at 4 on this side, so that's going to be negative six in a bracket because of the solid dot, and then to four on this side. And that will be a, a parenthesis because of the open dot. Um, so then the, don't, the range, the lowest the graph goes, is right down there at negative four. The highest the graph goes is up there at six. And these are both, it's graph, so it's, it's the same as if I had a point there. And so they're going to be inclusive, so it's going to go from negative 4 up to positive 6. Okay, so this last one would be the match I'd have you guys try. Um, so the first one here is uh, the graph doesn't continue forever, so we would think of it starting here and ending here. And so that's going to run from, looks like negative, oops, bracket, negative 5 up to the 4. And then that's going to be a parenthesis because that 4 isn't included. Um, for the range, again, low to high. So here's our lowest point on the graph, right? And then our highest point on the graph is right there. This doesn't matter. It's all included in here. Um, one kind of weird way I think of it is if, if you shined a flashlight on it, where would the shadow be on the y-axis? It seems like people do okay on domain, but range is a little trickier. So. I think it's just because it's sideways. Sometimes it helps if you turn it that way, or actually probably that way. Um, so the number line's going the right way, and then maybe a little easier to see negative four to six. The other thing I started to say is sometimes I'll do, like if you think of shining a flashlight on this, um, where the shadow would be on the y-axis, that's, that's gonna be your range. So if light can't get through there, um, which you couldn't from here to here, then that would be it. Um, so that would actually be, let's see, write down the answer. So from negative four, up to the 6. And then the next one, so this one has a solid there, arrow here, so that says it's going up. Again, on the homework, it would kind of look like that. Um, my domain, farthest I go left is negative 6, and that's going to be a bracket. And this is going to go up forever, and it's also going to go out forever, so that's going to positive infinity. So that's right here. And then for the range, lowest on the graph looks to be negative 3, and that will be a solid because you can just think of that as a point if there's graph there. 
it has to kind of look like an open dot for it not to be there. Um, so that's going to be from what I say, negative three. And then this graph goes up forever, so my y value is going to fill in forever, so up to infinity.